All right, so we're going to go ahead and when you go to the Isaac to login screen, you want to make sure that you select that Isaac contact, not Isaac recruit. There are two separate things. So you do want to make sure that you do the Isaac contact, which is the first one. The recruit one is um, for brokers. So I'm going to go ahead and log into my account. Once I get logged in, and once you get logged in as well, it's going to bring you to a dashboard. It's going to say, welcome, Ashley. I'm Ashley. It's going to say your name. Welcome at the top. The first thing that we're going to go ahead and do today is I'm going to walk you through how to do a custom header. There is a newsletter, and in that newsletter, you have the ability to go ahead and do a custom header. So I'm going to show you how to set that up. So what you want to do on the top screen, you want to click on your user profile right here. Go ahead, click on that. Go to the fourth header that says email header. You want to make sure if you have your standard header button selected, you want to click custom header. Click OK. That's just going to give you a reminder that you are going to create a custom header. The next thing you're going to want to do is click Need Help Creating a Custom Header. Hello, Melissa. And I believe we also have Jen on. So we're going to go ahead and click Need Help Creating a Custom Header. Include the selected email header for all new mass emailings. So once you click need help create in a custom header, we do not use the Isaac contact agent website. So we're just not gonna go ahead and click this one because we don't have the Isaac agent website. This first paragraph is if you have that agent website, we do not, we provide um, agent websites through a different platform. So for us, we're gonna go to the second paragraph that starts if you do not have an Isaac contact agent website. And we're going to click here. It's going to open up another page that says custom email generator header. You're going to type in your information. Your title, if you have any designations like um, CRS, if you're green designated, um, if you're um, a buyer, like any specific buyer designation, any specific seller designation, any designations you can put after your realtor or your title. Your phone number, you can do the dashes in your phone number if you want. You don't have to, it's up to you. 3610561, your website address if you have a website. Your personal slogan, if you have one, a banner quote. So I just use the one that we use at Lair, which is the roar that opens more doors. And then you can have your social media links. You can select up to a maximum of four. So if you have all of the social media platforms listed here, whatever your top three or four are. So for me, I have Facebook, I have LinkedIn, I have YouTube, I have Instagram, and I have Google+. Plus. So I'm just going to do Instagram and Google+, Plus because those are the ones that I use the most. Go ahead and choose a photo, any photo of you that you want to use. I'm going to go ahead and use this one. I'm not sure which one it is. So we're going to go ahead and use that one. And if you are cut off or anything like that, you will just need to adjust your photo, and I can tell right by looking at this one that my head is going to be cut off. So I'm going to try to find a different photo of me somewhere. I know I have one somewhere. Um, I, all right, I'll just use this one for the sake of the call. The company logo, if you are a Lair agent and you do not have a company logo, you can find this at LairAgentServices.com um, under our social media marketing 
tab, there's a section for the logos. If you need help with that, you can always email Happy Agent and someone on the Happy Agent team will go ahead and send that logo to you. Layer logo. And you wanna make sure you have the correct logo because I had a white one, I couldn't see it. Select in the background. So Isaac Generator for the header has um, stock images that you can use. You can take a look through. So if you're in Florida, you might want to use um, something that has palm beaches versus if you're in Maine, something with a lighthouse versus mass, you might want to use um, a white couch. However, I will caveat this, that if you do use any of the white um backgrounds and you do have a banner quote, your banner quote is going to go ahead and blend in with the white background. And I will show you guys that in just a second. And I'll show you how to edit that as well. The next thing is you're going to want to select a color palette. So I'm going to go ahead and select ocean sky. I know that colors, those colors pop with the layer logo. That's why I use the ocean sky, but you can use any of the color palette colors you want. Once I'm happy with all of my information, all my information is correct. You want to make sure you have all the correct information in there. I'm going to go ahead and click generate header. It's going to look like this. So see how my head is cut off right here. I will just go back and change that image. The roar that opens more doors. It's a little hard to see on here with the white couch because the write-in is white. So just keep in mind that if you do do a banner, you want to just do a... a more muted background that would pop that white right in. So we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna edit our photo to the Sunset Beach. We're gonna generate header. And now that that white pops more for the background. The next thing you're gonna wanna do is follow these instructions right here to use your email header in your Isoct contact CRM. You wanna save it as an image. So if you are using a Dell computer, I know it's right click save image as if you are using a Mac or an Apple product. I'm not sure how you save on Mac or Apple because it is different. So however you save an image, you're going to go ahead and save it. I just name it Isaac Header Updated. You can name it whatever you want just so you know where it is and what you've named it because we are going to go ahead and upload that in just a second. So the next thing um, is to sign into your Isaac to contact CRM, click the user profile on the top navigation bar, click the email header tab, which if we go back to our Isaac, we are already in the custom header tab because that's what we're creating. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna scroll down. I'm gonna delete the one that I currently have. To upload what you wanna do, you want to click this little icon right here that says insert image right next to the hyperlink. Click insert image, click upload, and it's gonna open your uploaded files or your downloaded files. We're gonna select the header we just created. Now, you can see all of these headers that I have here. So the one that I just created today is the one I wanna use. So you're gonna have to click on it. It's gonna highlight it in pink. Once it's highlighted it in pink, Go ahead and click insert. It's going to pop it right here. If you're happy with it, go up to the top and we're going to do upload photo, select file. I just learned this today. You don't usually have to do this, but for whatever reason, you're having to do this lately. So it's just an extra step. We're going to upload it. And now it's going to upload it as an image. But if you remove the photo, then it's going to remove it and just go back there. Not sure why Isaac decided to update that, but they did. Again, upload photo. We're going to upload it. Just make sure it's in there. Upload photo. And then we are going to go ahead and save this. Your changes have been saved successfully. So anytime you make any changes in Isaac, you want to go ahead and make sure that you click that save button. If you do not click the save button, then the work you just did will not save. Okay. Any questions on how to create a custom header from um, either 
Jen or Melissa, those of you that are watching live, do you have any questions on that for me? All right, no questions on that. The next thing we're gonna do is, oh, one question. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is I'm just going to walk you through on how to um, manually import a contact. So if you have a new client, you're going to click the contacts button right here. If your contacts button on the right or if your Rolodex on the right is not displayed and your contacts has an arrow pointing to the left, click on it. It'll open and it'll open this page. We're going to go ahead and click add. We're going to add a contact and I'm just going to add myself right now. Ashley, Gendro. And as you're going through this, you want to make sure that their email is valid. If you do not have a valid email, this will not work for them. Oh, what did I do? I guess I got out of it. So we're going to go ahead. And make sure you do not hit that enter button like I just did because that gets you out of adding a contact. You can add their phone number if you want. It is not a requirement. What is more of a requirement is a valid email address. You want to make sure that send mass emails is checked off if it is not. If they have a spouse or a partner, you can add that information to them, personal email letter setup. If you, per, if you know if they prefer letters or emails or if they don't have a preference, you can um, select that there. Dear email um, salutation, you could have dear Ashley, bonjour, greetings, hello, hi, hi, hola. Um, you can add that. Accepts mass emails, yes or no. If you want to send this client mass emails, accepts mass emails needs to be checked to yes, not no. If it is checked to no, even if you have this box up here, send mass email selected, this will not go through because they are marked as they do not accept mass emails. The home address you wanna put in, and this is important that when you are doing their home address, if you know their moving anniversary date, that you put it in there as well because Isaac does have a set it and forget it side to it as well for birthday. Um, so for any client that has a birthday and for moving anniversary dates. So we know Ashley, um, let's say Ashley moved into her property January 11th. You don't have to do the year, the year is not required. If we know her work details, we can put them in here so we know she works at Blair Realty Partners. If you don't know their work address, that's fine. But if you know um, their website and their email, you can put that in here as well. And what is cool about adding their um, business information or their work details is that right here, you can build a business directory and you can say include in business directory as long as you have this information filled out. And right over here, it will start building a business directory for you. So if you have a client who says, oh, I need a, an attorney for real estate in this matter. Okay, give me one second. Come in here, go down to your business directory, type in attorney or type in a name. If it's somebody like Mike Conway, Nicole Chote de Rosa, um, and then find gold, any attorney or any real estate attorney, real estate professional, insurance, anything like that, you want to put them in your business directory. So you can just come in here, pull up their information and give it to your client. Contact status unassigned. So she's a hot prospect. So we're going to put her as hot prospect. We're going to put her as a buyer. But if it's a past client, you can do past client, prospect type, client type. You can select any from the drop down. If you have a specific prospect or a client type that is not in the list, you can modify the list and you can add your own. So if we know Ashley is a um, top referral partner, somebody who gives me a lot of business, you can go ahead and add that category and it'll show it right down here. We can close that and now we can select Ashley as a top referral client. Contact groups, if she's an A list, a B list, um, cheerleader mom. So if you have kids that are in sports and you know you have a basketball team or a baseball team and all of you moms get together, you could 
again, do the same thing. You could do modified lifts. You could do uh, baseball moms, cheer moms, whatever you wanted to do. You could do that. And then you would just click add and then it would add that to your list and you could create a group that way. So then if, you know, you see something for baseball or basketball and you want to send that group of um, contacts, something specific, you can go ahead and do that right in here. It doesn't always have to be real estate related. The original source of contact. So select source if it was church or through a friend or cold call and door knock, uh, realtor.com or op city or open house or personal. So we're just going to do that, you know, actually a personal lead because it is myself, personal details. So if you back to the birthday, so if you know your client's birthday, go ahead and put it in here. We know Ashley's born December 2nd. Again, you don't have to put the year. If you don't want to, if you don't know the year, you don't need to put it in there. If they have a spouse, you can put in their spouse's birthday. If they're married and you know their wedding anniversary, you can put that in here because you can send them um, a wedding card automatically on their wedding anniversary as well as their birthday. If they're a male, female, you don't have to have all of this data in here, but you can if you want. If they have any household members, you can add that. If they have any pets, if you know that they have any pets or special interests. So I know Ashley loves jigsaw puzzles, so I can do. She is an avid jigsaw puzzler and an avid reader. So if it comes time for Ashley to close on a house and I'm trying to think of what I could get her for a closing gift, this could drop my memory and help me out. Again, you want to make sure once you have all of her information in here, you want to make sure you click save, because if you do not click save, Ashley's not going to be saved in your contact list anymore. So now what we're also going to do is we're going to go ahead and there's two ways you could do this. You could do keep in touch right from within Ashley's contact profile card, or you could go down to the left and do keep in touch right here. Since we are going to be doing a couple of things on the Keep in Touch platform, I'm going to go ahead and click the Keep in Touch right here on the left. And what we want to do is some of you may have these already active, some of you may not. So we're going to go click on the monthly e-newsletter. This is written by Isaac. They send it out every month automatically. You want to make sure all the months are selected. You can select whether or not you want it to go out on a specific day. So let's say you want it to go out on the 15th. You would just check the 15th and then the number 15. If you prefer to have it go out on the first Monday of each month, the second Monday, the third Monday, Tuesday, you can select that. Auto send time could be 8 a.m., 9 a.m., whatever time you want to select. Um, you can include it in your calendar. Isaac has a built-in calendar. So if you go to your calendar, any events that um, you save or create will show up on your calendar. I'm not going to click OK on this because I will lose everything I just did and I don't want to lose everything I just did just yet. So we're going to go home. Go ahead and continue going through and setting up our monthly newsletter. The default email subject is um, typically your real estate update. I changed it to your home gal. Ashley's real estate update. It's an individual personal message from me. If you have a team, you can um, modify the template to be from your team instead of you as an individual. If you are a team and your team has individual Isaac accounts, you can go ahead and use the individual. The email header, we are going to include it in this email. We are going to use our custom email header. You can have a signature or not. That's up to you. You can have um, the quotation selection included. You can have social media share buttons included and then all four of these boxes you want to have checked off so anytime you have a manually entered contact anytime you have somebody who is a lead capture anytime you have synced contacts or anytime you import contacts you want them to automatically be um, assigned to this monthly e-newsletter once you are all set with the time the date all of that the title Go ahead and click save. Any changes to the scheduling and content of your 
e-newsletter only apply to future issues. Click OK. That's just saying, hey, you've made changes to something that you have already assigned. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to create the birthday event. So again, you can include it in your calendar if you want. You would just check this off. Send a reminder a day before. So if you have checked send a reminder a day before, it will email you saying, hey, Ashley has the birthday tomorrow. Here's a preview of the birthday card that's going to be sent out to her. You can create a task to send a birthday card with a gift on a due date. So if we check this, you can do it a week before, five days before, four days before, whatever you want, whatever your heart desires. You can send a task reminder that you have to send a birthday card with a gift on X date or in X amount of days. If you do not have automatically assigned contacts with a birthday date to the birthday event, go ahead and check that off. And then the same thing for auto send e-card on birthday date requires a deliverable email address. You want to have these two boxes checked off because what that will then enable to happen is anytime you add a new contact or anytime you add a birthday to an existing contact in your Rolodex, they will be automatically entered into the birthday date event. So on their birthday every year, they will automatically get an email from you. So you want to go ahead and there's different birthday cards. There's generic ones. There's also a layer one. So I like the layer one, which is, where did it go? Layer birthday one right here. And we're going to preview it. And this is what it's going to look like for my clients when they see it on their birthday. It's going to say happy birthday, wishing you a wonderful day and year ahead. And it's going to be from me. So I'm going to click close preview. Now that I have this all set up, I'm going to go ahead and save it. So again, if you have contacts in your Rolodex already and you don't know their birthdays and you find out what their birthdays are, go ahead and just, you know, click on the contact, click edit contact, put in their birthday, click save. You want to make sure you save anything you change and then they will automatically be entered into this birthday um, day event and on their birthday, they will be sent a card. So we're going to save this and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to go back to keep in touch. We're going to do the same thing for the move in anniversary. So this is the same exact thing, just a different um, template. So we're going to include it in our calendar. We're going to send a reminder five days before, because then if you want to send them a handwritten card saying happy home anniversary, or you want to do a pop by, you can go ahead and do a pop by, pop by for their closing as well. Again, it will send you an email. If you want to create a task, you can check that. You can do um, five days before and it will um, create a task and it'll email you. And you can also send a task reminder five days before. So that way it reminds you as well. Again, if auto send e-card on move-in date and automatically assign contacts with the move-in date to the event are not checked off, you want to go ahead and check both these boxes off. Go ahead and look through the move-in anniversary cards and select whichever card you want. Again, preview content will show you what that card is going to look like. So if you don't like the anniversary of move-in three, you can go ahead and select move-in anniversary one. This one, it's okay. So, you know, you can change it if you want. Um, There is a layer one or there was a layer one. I don't know where the layer one went. I cannot seem to find it right now. Layer Easter, layer Halloween, layer Happy New Year, layer Happy Holidays. I'm not sure where the layer one went. We had a layer one. Layer, I will have to reach out to Isaac. Oh, home anniversary one is the layer branded one. So then preview. This is what it's going to look like. Stacy and I are aware that there is a typo right here. We are working on that on the back and end with Isaac to have them fix that and update the template. We're going to go ahead and close preview. Again, we're going to save this because we are creating an event. 
and we are going to save it. So anyone that is currently in our Rolodex that has a move-in anniversary date is automatically going to be assigned to them or is going to automatically be assigned to this Keep in Touch event. And then anytime you add a contact and you add in their move-in date, they will automatically be assigned to this event as well. So I know we have covered a lot on how to do a custom header, how to set up the monthly e-newsletter, how to set up the birthday keep in touch and the move in anniversary thing. And there is one more thing that I do want to cover. So we do have a custom header set up. However, what we do not want, because we have found that this just makes the emails clunky, is that in each um, keep in touch campaign, you can go into it by going to mass email and search in the keyword. So I know for me, it's a home anniversary one. So you want to go ahead and click exclude email header because it's going to be the email header on the top and then it's going to be the card on the bottom. So it's going to be very clunky and too much, too busy. Um, so to make it simpler, easier on the eyes for your clients, just go ahead and click exclude header and then go ahead and save it at the bottom, save email as template, save, and then anytime um, the home anniversary cards go out to your clients, your custom header will not be in there, but it will be in there for your other mass emails and the monthly e-newsletter that go out. The same thing for the birthday campaign. So we're going to go ahead and go back a page and we're going to do um, birthday. And we are going to go ahead and click layer birthday one. And the same thing, we're just going to do exclude header because we don't want the header in our birthday card. And then we're going to do save email as a template and save. Again, if you wanted to see what this would look like, you can do send preview. It's going to send you a preview of what that email is going to look like that your clients will receive. So it's just going to be this. Happy birthday, wishing you a wonderful day and year ahead. But if you want to see what it looks like with your custom header, you can, again, go ahead, send yourself a preview. If you don't like it with the header, then again, you want to do exclude. But if you want to leave your header in, click include. But I prefer not to include the header in the birthday or, or the home anniversary cards. So I'm going to do save email as template, save it. And now that when those cards go out, the um, header will not be in there. There is campaign reporting. So this campaign reporting right here will give you some stats on how many bounce backs you've had, um, the type of bounce backs, if there have been any auto email open. So this will give you a record of who's opened which email, when they've opened them, um, the date and the time that they've opened them, what was sent to them, what they opened, so you can see all of that information right here in the campaign report. And again, different reports for different stuff. On your dashboard, it gives you different data. Um, today's tasks, if you have any tasks, if you have any appointments coming up, your business pipeline, and it breaks it down for you new, unqualified, long-term, hot, current client, past client, past client, strong or referral, referral source, and if you have any unassigned, and then if you want, what you can do too is they do have a goal set in um, such in that I think is 12 to 15 questions that you can go through and answer. And off of those questions that you put in the goal set in, it'll set uh, prospect and activities for you. And once you update those, it'll keep track of all of your um, up-to-date stuff, your year-to-date goal, your year-to-date actual It'll keep track of all of that for you. If you have active listings and buyers, you can put them in here as well. You can update that in their contact. So if you wanted to um, update their, you know, currently interested properties, you would click on their name and you would go to properties. And then you can just, if they want to buy or add, you can go ahead and add a property buying preferences. You can add that if they have any business history with you already. 
you can go ahead and add that. Again, we don't use the agent website. We don't use social stream. Um, so Isaac is really a set it and forget it system. And um, it's very easy to keep in touch with your clients, keep top of mind, especially when it comes to their birthdays or their home anniversaries or even their wedding anniversary. If it's like a relative or a close friend or a cousin or somebody like that and you want to keep in touch, you want to stay top of mind with all of those people, you can because of Isaac's set it and forget it system. Does anyone on the call have any questions on anything I went over as far as setting up the keep in touch for the birthday or the move in anniversary or how to set up your monthly e newsletter, how to set up a custom header, how to add a contact, any questions at all um, for anyone that I can go ahead and answer? All right, it doesn't seem like anyone has any questions. That is all that I typically cover on these um, calls is how to set up those couple of things. Again, Isaac does have a lot to offer. If you do want a more in-depth call, a one-on-one -on -one call with me, if you are a Lair agent, go ahead and go to lairrealty.com backslash briefings. It's going to go ahead and have you fill out a form as to what you would like a one-on-one -on, -one on. It could be Isaac, it could be Real Scout, it could be Canva. It could be updated to your Facebook or your Instagram page and somebody on the Happy Agent team will reach out to you with um, three times that work um, within their schedule. And if none of those times work that they propose, just go ahead and let them know and we'll figure something out that works for you and for um, the happy agent team member that is responding to you to get your one-on-one -on -one call. Those one-on-one -on -one calls are 30 minutes. So again, it can be on Real Scout, it can be on Isaac, it can be on Canva. So if you are a Lair agent and you do want more one-on-one -on -one time on anything, go ahead and go to lairrealty.com backslash briefings, fill out that form and uh, somebody on the happy agent team will reach out to you. I hope everyone enjoys um, the weather up in New England. If you're in Florida, I hope it's nice and sunny down there. We are supposed to get more snow up in New England from what I hear this weekend. So everyone stay safe. And again, if you are a Lair agent and have any questions, just email happy agent. If you are not a Lair agent and you want to learn more about Lair, go to lairrealty.com or you can go ahead and um, email happy agent at lairrealty.com and just say you want to learn more about the brokerage and we would be happy to reach out to you. Thank you, everyone. You're welcome, Jen.